Welcome to the Academic Woman Amplified Podcast. I'm your host, Kathy Mazak, tenured full professor, mom of three, and firm believer that the culture of academia needs to change radically. Women are revolutionizing academia within institutions that were not built for us. If you're ready to reject the culture of overwork, kick guilt and overwhelm to the curb, and amplify your voice to make a real impact on your field without breaking down or burning out, you're in the right place. And it all starts with writing. Let's go. Do you feel like you never have enough time to get it all done? That's probably because you don't. But how do you know? If you feel like there are not enough hours in the day, then this episode is for you. Let's start by making one thing clear. You have too much going on and no one can save you from this but yourself. One of my favorite books about combating overwork in academia is The Slow Professor, Challenging the Culture of Speed in Academia by Maggie Berg and Barbara K. Sieber. Berg and Sieber make it really, really clear that while some of us want to believe that the ivory tower is somehow above capitalism and marketplaces, it is in fact deeply embedded in them. The result of neoliberalism and fast capitalism is the same in mega corporations as it is on campuses. Workers, including professors, are being squeezed. Every last drop of productivity is being extracted out of us. The job of the professor begins to resemble more middle management than erudite scholar. Cal Newport would say that we're waiting more and more in shallow work the paper pushing, the emails, the useless meetings. And more shallow work means that we're finding less and less time for deep work, the thinking and creating that we were trained to do and that many of us got into this profession for. So if you feel like daily life is overwhelmed by emails and meetings, that's because it is. And guess what? That's probably just fine with your university because your university is getting its needs met. The market is flooded, and if you don't have time to write and publish or to bring in big grant money, that's cool, because someone else, someone that is willing to work nights and weekends, or someone who has home care built in, will do it for you. Now, I'm not a negative person, so if you know me, you might be thinking, Kathy, why so gloomy? Well, it's because I want you to see that the fact that you feel overworked and overwhelmed is not a reflection on your personal character. It's not your fault. You are part of a system that is designed so that you feel exactly that way. So today we're talking about how to quote unquote find time with a strategy called My Ideal Week. If you're interested in more ways to make time to write, I've got a PDF list for you called 10 Ways to Make Time to Write. You can grab it by following the link in the show notes. So what is an ideal week calendar? An ideal week calendar is not a normal week. It's not an expected week. It truly is an ideal week. It is a visualization of how you can make your work fit into your working hours. So first, you need to start out by coming up with the basic categories of things that you do. So for example, we can use teaching, research, and service as a place to jump off from, but you're also going to want to include the categories of things or the types of things you do weekly. So because what we're going to do is once we get these categories down, then we're going to map them onto your work week. So let me give you a bunch of examples of categories. Teaching is one category that that I want you to think about, and that should spark blocks of time for things like class meeting times, course prep, grading. If I talk to you about research, think about what that includes for you, including data collection, lab work, reading, writing, Service might include meeting times, work on the service-related stuff, right? Work times to implement things that you talked about in meetings or to type up minutes or whatever is related to your service duties. You should definitely have on your ideal work week fixed meeting times for things, okay? So your lab meetings, your office hours, 
student advising that you do, okay? So I'm just trying to give you lots of ideas for things to include on your ideal calendar because the goal is to include everything, okay? So let me again kind of make clear that this ideal week calendar exercise is not supposed to be a week of your appointments. No, it's supposed to be blocked off slots that you could fit everything that you need to do for work into, okay? And something that I think is really helpful to do is to choose a color for each type of thing, all right? So everything related to teaching, use purple, and everything related to research, use orange, and, you know, come up with some kind of color coding system. The first time that I did this exercise, I did it on a piece of paper with a pencil and crayons because that was what was near me. And that ideal week calendar helped me so much as I went through my actual real life weeks. So here's what I want you to do. If you're gonna use the pencil, paper, and crayons method, then what you should do is just go ahead and make a grid calendar on a piece of paper. So make sure it has all the days of the week that you work. Let's shoot for those being Monday through Friday and not the weekends. And make sure you block off the time that you enter work and the time that you leave work. And then now I'm gonna give you some guidelines to think about as you fill in this calendar. Now, along the left-hand side, you might wanna leave one hour blocks, you know? And so basically you've got yourself a blank calendar grid for Monday through Friday. Now what you need to do after you've come up with your list of all the things that need to fit into your week, now you're gonna map that onto an ideal week. And let me give you some advice for doing this. So one of the things that really derails us in terms of time management is checking email first thing in the morning. Now, why do I preach this? It's because work arrives to us by email. Problems arrive to us by email. Deadlines arrive to us by email. And so by waiting and checking your mail after lunch, you can preserve the before email check time for other things that you planned to do. And what happens then is that your email doesn't derail the beautifully laid plans that you have for yourself. So I suggest creating an email block daily, and it should probably be between 30 minutes and an hour, and making that email block happen after lunch. Some more guidelines. Don't forget to work in what I call personal maintenance uh, into your ideal week calendar. So things like workouts or stand up and stretch times, definitely lunch and snack breaks should be part of your calendar. So you should definitely, I actually have a color for self-maintenance or personal maintenance, and those are blocks that I put on my calendar where I squeeze in a 15-minute or 30-minute walk during the work week or work during the work day, and when I definitely, definitely take time to stop and have lunch, which is something that living in Puerto Rico taught me to do, to not eat lunch while I worked, but instead to actually stop and take an hour long lunch break. So you can categorize those as personal maintenance and give them a color. Another guideline or something to think about as you put together this ideal week calendar is to consider the strategy of stacking your days. And what this means is just to put similar blocks together to minimize task switching. So one way to do this is if you teach Tuesdays and Thursdays, only Tuesdays and Thursdays, then try to also put your office hours, your grading time, your prep time on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And that way you have everything that has to do with students piled up on your Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then you can use your Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for other things. For example, maybe Monday and Wednesday are going to be your research and writing days. And Friday morning, you'll do a little more writing and then you have time for service work. So trying to put together on certain days, similarly themed activities can also be helpful. Another thing to keep in mind, consider 
corralling your activities together. So there's definitely some activities that you know tend to spill over. So if I have all the time in the world to create a lesson, I'll make a beautiful handout and I'll make a PowerPoint. I'll I'll take time to choose the colors of the presentation and to download new stock photos. But really, all of that is extraneous. And what happens a lot of times, at least for me, for course prep, is that course prep will just expand to the amount of time that I have. Same with email checking. So one way to corral activities that often for you seem to flow over the time that you've allotted to them is to butt those activities up against something that is like a hard switch in your schedule. So for example, you can preserve preserve the one hour before you teach to course prep, but when that one hour is up, you butt it right up against the courses you teach, so you have to stand up and leave. Or the same with email, right? Check your email right before you have to physically go move and do something different, like go to a weekly meeting or go pick up the kids or whatever it is. And that way, that activity can't just spill over into time slots that aren't meant for that. And then another thing, of course, to remember is to go back to episode two and learn all about how to find your tiger time. And when you've done that, make sure that your tiger time is blocked out on this calendar, okay? However many times, like, you know, I suggest in the Tiger Time episode, which is episode two, to think about blocking off one to two hours once or twice a week during your Tiger Time. So those are some guidelines to think about as you put together this ideal week schedule. Now, after you've done this ideal week exercise, I want you to reflect on it. All right. This is the most important part, really. So a few things. (laughs) Does the ideal week that you have mapped out for yourself represent your prescribed load? So for example, if you in your contract are supposed to be doing 50% teaching and 50% research to oversimplify, Does your calendar reflect 50% of the hours that you're spending working on teaching and 50% of your hours on research? If not, then a great idea is to start to tweak that ideal calendar to be approaching representing your actual load. The same with if you are supposed to be doing, you know, 10% service and some other percentage of things, and you look at your calendar and you realize that your service is taking up way more hours than you're supposed to have it taking up according to the load that was outlined in your contract, then you need to have a conversation with your department chair. So the ideal week exercise can be very revealing, okay? I want you to really think about, does this idea week represent your load? Does it represent the way you're being evaluated for tenure and promotion? If it doesn't, I want you to think about why doesn't it? Is that because maybe maybe the opposite of what I'm thinking is true and maybe you are supposed to be spending more time on teaching than research because you're at a teaching focused university but you have aspirations to maybe switch to a more research focused university so you're amping up your research in your current ideal calendar so that you can make that move. All right. But regardless, this should be a way for you to reflect how is your time really being used? Another thing I want you to think about is, does everything that you need to do fit into the week? If it doesn't, if you look and you still say, oh my, there's just not enough hours in the day, then you need to think, where can you cut? Before you say, I can't cut anything Let's get real for a minute. You have to cut something. If you do this ideal week exercise and you are filling 60, 70, 80 hours a week with work, that is not sustainable. That is a recipe for burning out. 
So you need to use this opportunity to think about how you can cut back, how you can switch your focus, how you can force your work to fit into a 40-hour week. So then I want you to think when you look at your ideal week calendar, I want you to think, how would it feel to live out this week? How would it feel to follow this plan that you've made for yourself and not let email consume your whole day? How would it feel to preserve time for writing? How would it feel to corral your teaching prep so that it's proportional to the amount of teaching that you're doing instead of letting it flow all over all of your other work? So this exercise is an exercise in centering you. It takes some real self-confidence and self-love to do this exercise and then live it out. Self-love because a lot of times we just plow right through lunch or we don't stand up and stretch or take a quick walk when we need to because we feel like, I just don't have time for that. The purpose of the ideal week exercise is to show you that You need to make time for these things. You need to make time for writing. And to really have you reflect on, you know, how are certain things that I do every day bloating up my work hours and expanding past what I need them to be? The next step, of course, after you've created your ideal week and you've reflected on it using the guide questions that I just walked you through The next thing that you need to do is live it out and see how it feels. And this is probably the hardest part because remember, the ideal week is ideal. It is not typical, perhaps. (laughs) It is ideal. And so as you attempt to live out your ideal week the way you've mapped it for yourself, you need to keep in mind a few things. One is that this is an exercise and you need to test this out and try it. The reason that we try new things is because what we're currently doing is not working. So if you've come this far and you're like, yeah, I need to try this ideal week thing, it's because something isn't working. You're working weekends when you don't want to be. You're working nights when you don't want to be. Things are overflowing. It's stressful. So what I want you to do is take action to control that stress. Take action. Do something different from what you've been doing. And so what you can do is try to, to the best of your abilities, follow your ideal week calendar for two weeks. After you've done that, and if you look at your email inbox and go, okay, half an hour a day on email is not enough, or an hour a day on email isn't enough, then you've identified what are areas of your academic life that need adjustment? What things can you do to reduce the number of emails you get? Are there ways that you could pre-filter your emails? Are there communication systems that aren't email that would work better for you? By trying out the ideal week, it lets you adjust and tweak. If you think, oh, wow, I, I can do prep in 45 minutes instead of two hours, fantastic. You learned something about yourself. If not, then what you need to do is tweak your ideal week and continue to readjust. The important thing with all the exercises that I give you and that I give my clients inside of my programs and courses is to try it. Try it and see if you can make a change in how you feel Because what I really want for you is for your academic life to feel better. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed and stressed out because that doesn't serve you and it doesn't serve humanity. You've got work to do. You've got a message to get out there. And I need you to get that out there without burning out. All right. If you're not a member of my I Should Be Writing Facebook group, get on over to Facebook and search for I Should Be Writing inside of groups. Or you can go to facebook.com slash groups slash I Should Be Writing all together and request to join. Once you're in there, tell us how it went. 
show us a picture of your ideal week calendar. I challenge you to take action towards living out your ideal week and see what happens. Let's make this academic life more centered, less stressed, and less overwhelming. Have a great week. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time loving on yourself and your writing by listening to this episode. If you'd like to continue the conversation, join the over 7,000 academic women in the I Should Be Writing Facebook group. Just go to facebook.com slash groups slash I Should Be Writing or search for I Should Be Writing inside your Facebook app. See you inside.